and now we're doing words work. <coughs> words work. If, when you write the answer, you only need to write Tim Turn Abby because there won't be enough room to write lines to post a few miles of the Tim Turn Abby recollections, something about the lie, the river lie, you know, just put Tim Turn Abby. Put everybody calls it. Okay. Five years have passed. That's the first line. That's great because that shows us that he's remembering. It gives us the whole concept of memory and all of that. So that's line one, and we're in about five years. You need those, that one. that's a good selection. These beauteous forms, though through a long absence, have not been to me as is a landscape to a blind man's eye. And I said that a bunch of times. That's, the, that's on the first page of Tension Abbey. <coughs> so the landscape to a blind man. Not been as a landscape to a blind man's eye. Because he remembers them through those five years. While here I stand not only with the sense of present pleasure, but with pleasing thoughts that in this moment there is life and food for future years. So there is food. I don't know what line that is. It's, um, it's page 793, line 63. 63. Line 63. This is that he's recognizing that he is experiencing a spot of time. Because he says, ah, I'm in this moment, this one spot, I can use this for the future. So he knows that. Okay, that's a good one. We also get, nor less I trust to them I may have owed another gift of aspect more sublime. That's good. Okay, that aspect more sublime. More sublime. Can somebody give me the line number? <coughs> Passage. Pardon? Line 37. Okay. Um, and what I also want you to remember, you also need to be able add this to your notes. Okay. Be able to define or at least describe what sublime means. It is an example would be Job's encounter with, uh, with God in the whirlwind. It is an encounter with something that is transcendent and it does not mean pleasant, happy, sunny day. It's more of the light of setting suns, um, an appreciation of the transcendent in a world where we understand that God is still there even though we are experiencing like, death or something like that. So, um, aspect more sublime. Then the next one, until the breath of this corporeal frame and even the motion of our human blood, that almost suspended, we are laid asleep in body and become a living soul. That one is huge. Be sure you know those lines. Lay the sleeping body and become a living soul. And this is that whole idea of the eye made quiet so that we see into the life of things. That whole idea that you're going to go out into nature and you let your senses become quiet. You're getting rid of the enlightenment <clears throat> and scientific empiricism, that sort of thing. And, and, Empiricism, reason, you're just going to try to encounter the transcendent. So that whole I made quiet. Okay, those quotes are really good. These are by Matthew Akis, and it's about Wordsworth's Tintern Abbey. Those are all really good quotes. Okay, I made quiet. So if you're looking for them on the discussion, that's really important. Um, and this is where Wordsworth opposes, Wordsworth opposes, do you remember the phrase I gave you? The de despotism of the eye or the senses. It's 
like, let's stop trying to see and understand everything. Are you able to get the bottom of the thing over here? Is that getting me? Oh, got it. Okay. That's overcoming the despotism of the eye. Okay, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and... Hmm. Oh, I've got two pages. I'm going to come back to Blake. And Kaylin also does this. Uh, also works on Tintern Abbey. Um, five years have passed. Good. Aspect more sublime. Good. Um, thoughts that in the moment of the future. Good. Um, more about the sublime. To chasten and subdue, I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused. Good. Um, then these steep woods and lofty cliffs, uh, green pastoral landscape, that's another example of a spot of time. So that's another good one, okay? Those are good, some of them overlap. Those are good. Um, Lakiria has immortality, intimations of immortality. Wait, let's. I did Tintern Abbey too, but I did the same ones that I've already been said. Okay, you That's, did the same It's scrolling down, it's at the bottom, but I didn't put all of mine up for some reason. The one that I did that I did put was um, one one and two where he talks about um, still loving nature and um, perceiving how the poet perceives half perceives, half creates. Okay, yeah, that half perceives and half creates is <coughs> another very important quote. The half perceive and half Half create is a really important one. The half perceive and half create also is an important line. I also like the fact that on yours you you touch on um, yeah half perceives half create, showing the difference between the child and the poet. And we want to remember you do need to know for Wordsworth. I'm going to add a little bit here. Okay, before we get to uh, immortality, information of immortality. Okay, where is work? You need to know the three stages of the poet. What I may do is give you a line from the poetry and I'll say, you know, who is the author, what is the title, or I might ask you, this is an example of what stage. Is this the child or the adult or the poet? I might ask you to do that. You also need to know about what is the sublime. Um, and I want you to remember the three stages of the poet is one thing. I also want you to know the genre wheel. Remember that genre wheel that we did? Genre wheel. You need to be able to draw that when lyric, tragic, comic, epic, you need to know that the, the, uh, there's no motion in the lyric. It is the celebration of one moment. You need to know that tragedy has a downward motion because the hero falls. You need to know about comic poetry because then the hero Kind of comes, you know, it's like there's the remiss. The, everybody starts off bad and ends happy. Epic is about foundings, and then we have no motion in the lyric. There are three kinds of lyric there is anticipation, consummation, and lamentation. Okay. Tragedy, you have a good man, not perfect, makes a mistake, and falls. That's downward. The comic, ordinary guy, starts off in a mess and things work out. Comedy has an upward motion. Epic has an upward motion. The main thing you need to be able to do is to, to draw these three down here and then put the at the top and tell me that there, is, there are three kinds. That there, but there's no movement because there's no plot in the lyric. You need to be able to say no plot in the lyric. The others have a plot. Celebration of one moment. Okay. Um, 
You also need to be able to talk about the fact that Wordsworth is starting something new. He is writing romantic poetry as opposed to, say, Pope. Pope is neoclassical, right? 